so this video is for basic facial and we're gonna start this video um, as if we were just getting to work so um, the first thing we do when we get to work we come in and we wash our hands so we would wet our hands at the sink um, with water and get some liquid hand soap and coin size we're gonna wash our hands together down to our wrists we're gonna wash the back of our hands down to our wrists. We're gonna wash our fingers. We're gonna wash the backs of our fingers. We're gonna wash between our fingers, um, nails and uh, fingertips between our fingers and our thumbs. We're gonna wash our thumbs, of course. We're gonna wash our wrists. We're gonna do all of that interlocking washing for a minimum of 20 to 30 seconds and then we will thoroughly rinse it under the water at the sink when you feel like it's a proper rinse. You'll grab some disposable paper towels, turn off the water, dry everything thoroughly, toss those paper towels in the trash can, get your liquid hand sanitizer, 70% um, ethyl alcohol, and you're gonna sanitize it up. And once your hands are nice and dry, you are um, ready to prepare your room. So we've looked at our schedule and we know that our first appointment is a basic facial. So let's go over what we need to do to get our room and space ready for our client. And you of course would wanna do this before your appointment arrives, as much of it as you can. So you're gonna disinfect your workstation, your bed and your equipment using a disinfectant wipe following manufacturer's instructions. You will check equipment to ensure that all devices are in safe working order and plugged into a working receptacle. You will gather clean supplies needed for the facial service, storing in a clean closed container. You'll turn on the hot cabbie and stock with at least three clean wet towels. More towels may be needed depending on the service and the client's needs. You'll fill a clean steamer glass with distilled water and preheat your steamer. You'll dispense products needed for the service according to skin type and client's needs as follows. You're gonna prepare disposable portion cup tray for each product with a portion of the product by opening the top of the container and ensuring the tip of the nozzle does not come into contact with the disposable portion cup tray or you can remove the product with a disinfected or clean single-use spatula. Close the lid to the product and set the portion cup tray on the tray. You will drape your facial bed using one fitted sheet, one flat sheet, and three towels. Place the clean laundered sheets down on the disinfected facial bed, placing a towel horizontally at the head of the bed. Lay a hairnet and headband on top of the first towel, along with a rolled towel to support the head and neck of the client. Save the third towel to lay across the client's decollete. So you'll do all of that, and then I'm gonna show you the tray that I have ready to go for my facial um, that's already been set up. Um, the only thing that you might have to take into consideration is if it's a first time client, you have to discuss skin type before maybe you can um, portion out some of this, but at least you could get your disposable cups out and, and everything that you know for sure you would need. So I have um, water, I have my toner, I have my astringent, I have my cotton rounds, four squares, um, wooden kit, uh, stick Q-tips, disposable gloves, I've got some gauze squares, I've got my mask brush, um, I've got my scooper to toss so I go through things. So cleanser, um, exfoliant, um, massage, mask, eye cream, moisturizer. And I'll just pretend like those have been customized to the client, which I would do that once maybe I have my client consultation, but I would have all the things out and set up and then um, I can fill those as needed if um, something changes when we discuss, maybe allergies, etc. So. Sorry, I heard something. but it's the neighbors. I think. Okay, um, so for our client consultation, we'll meet and greet our client. We will do that always 100% of the time, 100% of the time, no exceptions. 
with clean hands. So just so you know, I'm gonna wash my hands again before I start the service, but going to greet and meet my client, they're already clean. So let's talk about our client consultation. That is the next step that happens. So we're gonna greet our client and escort them to the work area. We will determine the client's preferences and assess the client's needs. We will assess the client's skin by performing a visual skin analysis to ensure that there is no inflamed, infected, broken, raised, or swollen skin in the area to be worked on or an open wound or sore in the area to be worked on, infection or infestation, for example, lice, to prevent from safely performing the service. We will assess the client's consultation form for any medications and products used within the last 72 hours consult on any known allergies. We will consult with a client on any facial surgeries within the last three months and if the client is under a physician's care. We'll assess if the client is prone to cold sores or fever blisters. We will assess if the client has used exfoliating or lightening agents within the last 72 hours like alpha hydroxy acids, beta hydroxy acids, hydroquinone, etc. We'll assess facial injections within the last three weeks like Botox or hyaluronic fillers. If the client is free of all of those contraindications, um, it is safe to move forward with the procedure or service and our girl is good to go. So we wanna make sure we get her comfortable. We would give her some privacy so that she could put her drape on and then we would get her comfortable in the bed. So we would get her in the facial bed and then I have a rolled towel here that I would be placing under her neck for more support. I've got a headband that I'm going to put on next to keep her hair out of the way. And then I've got that additional towel that I'm going to just cover up here with. And, and then I'm gonna wash my hands because I'm not gonna start that service without doing that. So I'm gonna wet my hands at the sink. Um, I'm gonna find that liquid hand soap, coin size, and I'm going to wash my hands together down to the wrist. I'm gonna wash the back of my hands down to the wrist. I'm gonna wash my fingers. I'm gonna wash the backs of my fingers fingertips and nails between my fingers, between my fingers and my thumbs, wash those thumbs, wash the wrists. We're gonna do all of that wash for a good 20 to 30 seconds minimum, and then we're gonna thoroughly rinse our hands underneath um, the sink, get a proper rinse, once you feel like they're good and rinsed, grab some disposable paper towels, turn off the water, dry everything thoroughly, throw it in the trash, and then you're gonna get your hand sanitizer with 70% ethyl alcohol, and you're gonna sanitize away. And it's then that you can begin your service. The first thing that we're gonna do is remove her makeup. So we're gonna take some cotton rounds with some makeup remover on them. Press those on the eyes. And then we're gonna take a cotton round for her lipstick. And some clients are more glamorous than others, uh, or will have more makeup on. Just do what you need to do to get it off. Gently, of course.
and then we're gonna dry. Um, so now we're going to do our first uh, cleanse. So we're going to wash the face and then we're going to do a skin analysis after the first cleanse. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the rest of makeup like foundation, etc. that might be on the face. So we're going to do our very, very first cleanse. and I'm gonna remove um, the cleanse now.
Okay, I'm just making sure she's nice and dry. And then I am going to cover her eyes with cotton rounds because I need to get in there and do a skin analysis with my magnifying lamp and it would be bright. So you wanna cover and protect her eyes. So we're gonna take two cotton rounds and do just that. So we would be bringing in our magnifying lamp or woods lamp, turning it on. And this is the point where we're going to look through that and analyze her skin. So we would be looking for things like um, dehydration, flakiness, fine lines, um, abrasions, excess sebum, um, congestion in the skin, anything that hyperpigmentation that A, that she might have said is a concern or B, that we're just looking for things that we can improve, but obviously seeing the benefits, seeing the good stuff too, but this is where you get to get deep and you want to take a minute and, and really do a proper analysis because it's going to help with this facial but it's also going to help going forward recommending services and other products that can support at home um, so you don't want to rush this step you want to take the time to really figure out what you're looking at and what um, your clients concerns might be and then also what some benefits of some things that you do to help her would be so you'll be able to really hone in for this one but also um, this appointment, but also be able to guide her on the right path um, moving forward. So once you feel like you've done that really well, um, you'll turn off your light and then you'll um, move your magnifying lamp out of the way or your woods lamp. So then you can remove those cotton rounds and you have two more cleanses to do. So you've got to do your second cleanse and your third cleanse. So I'm going to go in here with my second cleanse. And you need to remove your second cleanse.
and then you want to do your third and final cleanse. Once again, you've got to remove that third and final cleanse. After you finish your third cleanse, you're going to tone. So I have a um, cotton round and then I have a spritzer and I'm going to make sure that they don't touch when I do my spritzing. My hands wet, sorry, drying off my spritzer. so they are not touching.
once you have finished with your toner, um, it is time for exfoliation. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a pea size of um, exfoliator and we're gonna apply it to the face and massage it in, following manufacturer's directions, of course, but um, for one to two minutes. So I'm just gonna spread a little bit out on the client and then we are gonna begin that exfoliation process. So we're gonna start with a little massage to begin. Massaging it in the skin. And with your exfoliator, you wanna make sure that you avoid the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, which we do for everything, but just reiterating that here. should be good and so once you've done that you are going to <clears throat> do something that I don't have the equipment so I'm going to uh, read through it so um, <clears throat> we would retrieve our facial steamer and turn it on we would position the steamer next to the facial bed that is facing away from the client as the water heats up um, and emits an even outflow of mist once the steamer is emitting a mist You'll position the steamer 16 inches over the client's face, aimed at the client's chin for even distribution on the face, and you'll allow the unit to function for three to five minutes. Remove the steamer from the client's face and then return the steamer to its previous location for disinfection. So you're gonna bring that steamer over to the bed and make sure that's facing away from the client turn it on and let it um, get to where it's consistent. And then you can turn it towards the client at the chin. Um, that way it will evenly distribute up and over the client's face. Three to five minutes, obviously we're doing a video, so we are not going to do that today. Pretend like we've turned it off, or we've turned it away from the client, taken it back to where it was and turned it off, um, and we're gonna leave it there for disinfection. So the next thing we're gonna do is remove our exfoliant um, and we're gonna use a hot towel to do that. I don't have a hot cabbie, so I'm gonna pretend like I do. Um, and we're just taking our rag from the hot cabbie right now and it's quite hot so we're shaking it out and we're testing that temperature on our wrist when we feel like it's comfortable we are going to test it on our client's collarbone she says it feels great so I'm gonna do a towel nice and pretty and then lay it on her face we're gonna leave the nose out but we're gonna cover up everything else with our nice warm towel so this is definitely my preferred method of removing product for each step of removal during the facial, but because I don't have a hot cabbie, I'm just using those water and four squares, but know that I would if I could.
and then um, you need to dry your hands thoroughly because this is the part where we're going to do extraction. So you have to put your gloves on, your disposable gloves. And it's hard when you're, if your hands are wet. So you've got your hands in your gloves and then you have two options for extraction. I'm going to use wooden stick Q-tips soaked in um, astringent. Um, you could also use a cotton round soaked in astringent. These have to be thrown away between each extraction. So you get two new ones for every extraction. Cotton rounds you kind of work your way around. So I'm throwing it away, getting a new pair, soaking them. So you just continue that process until you're finished with your extractions. And one thing to note is that um, you wouldn't want to do extractions for any more than uh, five to seven minutes because it can be painful for the client and you do not want them to be in discomfort for long periods of time. We're gonna do one more. And then you can remove your gloves and you would throw them away at this point because you have done extraction. So they are oop and they need to go. Um, so we have um, exfoliated and extracted and we're gonna follow with toner same way that I did it before, I'm going to spray a cotton round. And toning. And the nice thing about the follow-up after the extraction is it's massage. So after that pain, she's going to get some relaxation. So um, only thing I can say to note about massage is that make sure you get enough of your massage product on your hands before you um, go in for the massage because you don't want to go back to the client. Um, like hands leave the client, go back to the client, leave the client. You want to keep your hands on the client throughout the massage until it's done. So try to get as much as you can from the beginning when you're applying it. So I'm just going to spread out all of my massage product first before I begin the massage so that it's evenly distributed throughout the areas that I'm going to massage before I start my massage and then I won't be talking I'm just going to do my massage and because I have to show the different massage techniques that they want to see in the video